Let's get ready to rumble. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're pitting film, TV, sports, and music figures against each other to decide our person of the decade. We'll be matching them in brackets of single elimination knockout rounds, going through film, then TV, sports, and finally music. We're basing the results on each person's achievements and influence from 2010 to 2019. The winners will face off until only one remains standing. And I'm not, so you say I'm not even in the top five? I didn't say that. What? She's saying that. This whole thing is stupid. She's saying that. Ready? Let's go. Film, round one. Jennifer Lawrence versus Robert Downey Jr. There's 24 of us, Gail. Only one comes out. The 2010s marked Lawrence's breakthrough and continued Downey's comeback. Lawrence hit the ground running with Winter's Bone, Hunger Games, and Silver Linings Playbook, winning an Oscar for the latter. I did my research. As Tony Stark, Downey headlined the MCU, the biggest film series ever. I'm the best. While still beloved by many, Lawrence hit a rough patch towards the decade's end with Passengers, Red Sparrow, and Dark Phoenix. Downey finished on a high note with the record-breaking Avengers Endgame, giving Iron Man the edge here. Oh, did I? Well, thank God I'm here. Winner, Robert Downey Jr. Emma Stone versus Margot Robbie. Gwen Stacy or Harley Quinn? You either follow my rules or follow my rules, capiche? Thank you. Stone came into her own this decade, while Aussie native Robbie hit the mainstream internationally. Following her starring role in Easy A, Stone scored three Oscar nominations, with a win for La La Land. The Wolf of Wall Street was just the beginning for Robbie, who got an Oscar nomination for I, Tonya. I'm just trying to... I'm trying to do the best with what I know how to, Ms. and Harding. you're giving me, a, it's like you're giving me a life sentence if you do that. You can't do that. Miss Harding. A close call, but Robbie is to the 2010s what Marilyn Monroe was to the 1950s, making this bombshell the favorite. Winner, Margot Robbie. Are you sure? Lupita Nyong'o versus Dwayne Johnson. The king is dead. Come with me, unless you want to join him. In a decade when diversity was a frequent topic of discussion, Nyong'o and Johnson stood out as two of the most influential performers of color. Nyong'o won an Oscar for her debut feature performance in 12 Years a Slave, and later starred in hits like Black Panther and Us. Little girl, run! While Nyong'o's star shone brightly, Johnson has become the very definition of star power, with blockbuster franchises like Fast and Furious and Jumanji smoldering his way to victory. Winner, Dwayne Johnson. What just happened? Um, you just smoldered. Leonardo DiCaprio versus Joaquin Phoenix. When you bring me out, can you introduce me as Joker? Both started young, but DiCaprio and Phoenix have matured into two of their generation's greatest actors. I don't believe in luck, right? As Calvin Candy, Jordan Belfort, and his Oscar-winning turn as Hugh Glass, DiCaprio gave one stellar performance after another this decade. Following an acting hiatus, Phoenix's career rose from the ashes with films like The Master and Her. Joker aside, though, Phoenix has mostly stuck to arthouse pictures. Well, you're kind of nosy. <laughs> Am I? Whereas DiCaprio's films have entertained critics and mainstream audiences, narrowly taking the cake. Winner, Leonardo DiCaprio. Maybe in the next life. Round two, Robert Downey Jr. versus Margot Robbie. Whereas Downey Jr. mainly stuck to playing Iron Man, Harley Quinn was just the tip of the iceberg for Robbie, who's played everyone from Queen Elizabeth I to Sharon Tate. What have you produced in all your travels between our kingdoms? That's not to say Downey's work grew repetitive, however. We've watched Tony Stark evolve over the decade, and Downey has fleshed him out to the point that he almost feels real. Robbie's filmography has more variety, but Downey molded Tony into quite possibly the most iconic character of the 2010s. Because the truth is I don't want to stop. Winner, Robert Downey Jr. Dwayne Johnson versus Leonardo DiCaprio. Hacking theaters is not easy nowadays, but Johnson and DiCaprio were both among the decade's biggest box office draws. Simply hearing their names got us excited to see a movie. 
I mean, that black Superman thing, that really got me. I love that. Whereas DiCaprio usually had a high-profile director like Martin Scorsese or Quentin Tarantino in his corner, however, Johnson's been the primary selling point for most of his movies. Johnson's irresistible appeal made him the world's highest-paid actor and People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive in 2016. Not to mention this round's winner. Because I'm flexing this and all of that. Winner, Dwayne Johnson. Round three, Robert Downey Jr. versus Dwayne Johnson. That has got to go to work. In the early 2000s, Downey was battling substance abuse, while Johnson was best known for WWE and The Scorpion King. Both have come a long way, epitomizing the term movie star throughout the 2010s. While Downey is forever Iron Man, Johnson simply owned this decade with his widespread presence, box office success, and surprising acting versatility, proving he's more than your average action hero. What can I say except you're welcome? Mr. The Rock, we raise our glasses and our eyebrows to you. I, I made so the this finals is perfect, though. This to is perfect. person of the decade. So I would love you guys. Our winner for film, Dwayne Johnson. Next up, TV. Round one, Ryan Cranston versus Peter Dinklage. On the television drama front, Cranston and Dinklage ruled like no other. Cranston already won primetime Emmys last decade for his riveting lead performance on Breaking Bad. Say my name. The AMC series brought him four more Emmys this decade, two for acting and two for producing. Likewise, Dinklage picked up four Emmys for playing Tyrion Lannister on Game of Thrones. But do continue, didn't mean to interrupt. Whereas Dinklage was a scene stealer on his show, however, Cranston was his show, making Mr. White this round's king. Winner, Brian Cranston. Eisenberg. You're goddamn right. Elizabeth Moss versus Sandra O. Oh. Both actresses rose to prominence in the 2000s, with Moss playing Peggy Olsen on Mad Men and O oh playing Christina Yang on Grey's Anatomy. You make me brave. They continued these roles well into the 2010s, although even better ones awaited. O oh took home a Golden Globe for her role on Killing Eve, while Moss received an Emmy for The Handmaid's Tale. Both are exceptional, but Moss's Golden Globe winning work on top of the lake propels her to the top of this round. Shut up! Shut up! Winner, Elizabeth Moss. Andy Samberg versus Kristen Bell. In terms of comedy, few television stars made us smile more than Samberg and Bell. Samberg gave us more classic SNL digital short songs like I Just Had Sex, Jack Sparrow, and Three Way The Golden Rule. Bell landed leading roles on House of Lies and The Good Place, while also stretching her dramatic muscles in Veronica Mars season four. Samberg narrowly takes this round though, for his consistently hilarious performance as Jake Peralta on Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Winner, Andy Samberg. Oh my God. Donald Glover versus Bill Hader. These two guys can do it all. Following his stint as Troy Barnes on Community, Glover went on to create and star in Atlanta, winning two Emmys for season one alone. After Stefan got hitched on SNL, Hader co-created two ingenious comedies, Documentary Now and Barry the latter of which won him two acting Emmys. The queen is dead. As ambitious as both funny men are, the sheer unpredictability of Atlanta demonstrates why Glover is one of the most varied voices of his generation. It's all about who you know. I knew somebody. Winner, Donald Glover. Round two, Brian Cranston versus Elizabeth Moss. When we think of the term emotional powerhouse, Cranston as Walter White and Moss as June Osborne are two performances that immediately come to mind. Just like all the other times. Whereas Moss mainly stuck to drama this decade, Cranston was not afraid to get funny with roles on Curb Your Enthusiasm and Supermansion. You're trying to do a little sneaky watch peek? I'm not trying to do a sneaky watch peek. I'm trying to be efficient with our time. He even directed a couple of episodes of Modern Family in The Office. Moss can be quite funny too, but Cranston is the one who knocks when it comes to balancing comedy and drama. Winner, Brian Cranston. I am the one who knocks. Andy Samberg versus Donald Glover. Both are hysterical, musically gifted, and have natural screen presence. 
whether they're hosting a live television event or starring in a single-camera sitcom. Both also keep busy behind the scenes, with Sandberg executive producing Pen15 and I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robinson. Glover's TV credits go beyond acting, producing, and songwriting, as he serves as writer and director on many Atlanta episodes. What's more, Glover has taken us to surprisingly dramatic places, proving his range knows no end. Winner, Donald Glover. Round 3. Brian Cranston vs. Donald Glover I need to catch up on Breaking Bad. Be it comedy or drama, Cranston and Glover owned the airwaves in the 2010s. Maybe your best course would be to tread lightly. Breaking Bad aside, Cranston also had memorable roles on Sneaky Pete and All the Way, in which he reprised his Tony-winning role as LBJ. Community in Atlanta weren't Glover's only TV projects either. He also popped up on Girls, SNL, and even Sesame Street. Sneeze it up, baby! As far as work behind the scenes goes, however, Glover edges out Cranston for giving Atlanta its distinctive voice. Our winner for TV, Donald Glover. On to sports. Round 1. LeBron James vs. Serena Williams While James and Williams both launched to superstardom before the 2010s, they are both having one hell of a decade. Serena returned from injuries to dominate women's tennis once again in the 2010s, winning 12 Grand Slams and capturing the most slams in the Open era overall. On the other hand, LeBron was a three-time NBA champion, three-time Most Valuable Player, three-time Finals MVP, and an All-Star every year. Sorry, Serena. James is king for a reason. That's enough. Winner, LeBron James. Cristiano Ronaldo vs Usain Bolt Both of these men are absolute legends in their home countries of Portugal and Jamaica respectively, but who's had a bigger impact on the world stage? Ronaldo won the Ballon d'Or four times this decade as football's top player, and led Portugal to a huge European championship win in 2016. But Usain Bolt has won just about everything he's entered winning an unprecedented six Olympic gold medals and eight world championships since 2010. This round goes to the Jamaican Flash. Winner, Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt of Jamaica is the fastest man on the planet. Lionel Messi versus Sidney Crosby. The pride of Argentina versus the pride of Canada. Who will move on? Sid the Kid brought back-to-back -back Stanley Cups to Pittsburgh, along with league MVPs both seasons, and led Canada to two Olympic golds in men's hockey. Crosby, it's over! Messi, meanwhile, is considered the best player of his generation, taking home the Ballon d'Or and the European Golden Shoe a record six times each. Sorry, Canada. Argentina for the win. Winner, Lionel Messi. Tom Brady versus Simone Biles. One's reaching the end of his historic career, while the other is just starting hers. Despite being just 22 years old, Simone is arguably the greatest gymnast ever, winning four golds in a single Olympics and dominating the World Championships since 2013. But she's no Tom Brady yet. Like, this dude is the undisputed GOAT. With three Super Bowl rings this decade and six total, two Super Bowl MVPs and two regular season MVPs. Sorry, Simone. Maybe next decade. Winner, Tom Brady. Round 2. LeBron James vs Usain Bolt The king of the hardwood and the king of the track. Both are the best in their field, but who's more important? Usain has all those Olympic and World Championship golds we mentioned, and he's also aiming to limit the world's carbon footprint with his electric scooters. James, however, on top of all his golden hardware, has led two different teams to the finals eight years in a row and opened his own school for at-risk students. All hail King James. Instead of saying, why me? They're saying this is what he want me to do. Winner, LeBron James. Lionel Messi versus Tom Brady. Messi and Brady are the best at what they do, so what sets them apart? Messi is Argentina's all-time leading scorer on the field, and off it, he's the face of Adidas and Gillette in Europe. 
and made Time's Top 100 list twice. As for Brady, all the rings and recognition aside, he has ingrained himself into North American culture with TV and movie appearances, marrying a supermodel, and penning his own diet book. Tom's just everywhere. Winner, Tom Brady. When you're really on and you're nailing it, you just want to repeat it. Round 3. LeBron James vs. Tom Brady Both of these athletes are among the best to ever play their respective sports. The fact that Brady is 42 and the Patriots are 7-2 favorites to win the Super Bowl again this year tells you all you need to know. Meanwhile, King James and the Lakers sit atop the Western Conference, despite a rough season in 2018. James's humanitarian work, however, makes him an unparalleled role model in sports. He's a huge advocate for nonprofits that aid troubled youth, with his own charity in the LeBron James Family Foundation. Our winner for sports, LeBron James. So, so far, that's Dwayne for film, Glover for TV, and LeBron for sports. Time for music. Round 1. Beyonce vs. Lady Gaga Beyonce's Mrs. Carter Show World Tour broke records around the world. But she had some fierce competition from Lady Gaga, who was riding high on studio album success, not to mention her work on A Star Is Born. Thank you, but no thank you. Okay, oh. Say it just like that. B edges out Gaga here in our opening round, however, thanks primarily to the strength of her albums Beyonce and Lemonade. Sure, Gaga's Born This Way was epic, but Art Pop and Joanne seem to be cases of diminishing returns. Winner, Beyonce. Kendrick Lamar vs. Drake Could any modern hip-hop artist touch Kendrick Lamar? Well, Canadian rapper Drake also enjoyed immense success throughout the decade. The former Degrassi star may have started from the bottom, but he soared to the top with tracks that were both commercial and critical hits, picking up four Grammys along the way. However, Lamar's 2015 To Pimp a Butterfly was the hip-hop album to beat in the 2010s, giving this 13-time Grammy winner an easy pass into our next round. Winner, Kendrick Lamar. Ariana Grande vs. Rihanna Ariana Grande killed it in the 2010s, with five studio albums and 14 top 10 singles. It's no wonder Billboard named her 2018 Woman of the Year. Meanwhile, Rihanna proved that she still had plenty of gas in her creative tank, pumping out a string of number one hits, including the international smash We Found Love. She also founded her own charity foundation and beauty empire, and became a Barbadian ambassador. Ariana's Thank You Next may have broken YouTube records, but you cannot argue with Riri's dominance. Winner, Rihanna. Taylor Swift vs. Kanye West I, I'm really happy for you, I'm gonna let you finish, but Beyonce had one of the best videos of all time. Will you let Taylor finish now, Mr. West? Both Taylor Swift and Kanye West crafted some of the decade's most popular acclaimed albums. West emerged from behind the mixing desk to drop hip-hop masterpieces, obsess the sneaker world, and marry Kim Kardashian. Meanwhile, Taylor Swift's Red in 1989 cemented her status as pop superstar and icon the latter album earning her a Guinness World Record for being her third consecutive album to go platinum during its opening week. Sorry, Kanye. Winner, Taylor Swift. Round 2. Beyonce vs. Kendrick Lamar I want to be something out of the ordinary, but something I connect to. Both Beyonce and Lamar were showered in accolades this decade, and named in Time's 100 Most Influential People, Beyonce twice. In 2018, Lamar picked up a Pulitzer for his album Damn, while Beyonce headlined Coachella, turning the event into the Netflix concert film Homecoming. But Queen Bee also smashed records for tours, album sales, and Grammys, becoming one of the highest earning artists in history, all while campaigning tirelessly for charitable causes. Who runs the world? Beyonce. Winner, Beyonce. I've been waiting too, and I'm not a cub anymore! <laughs> Rihanna vs. Taylor Swift Rihanna and Taylor Swift actually have a lot in common in terms of their music careers. Since their debuts, both have branched out into new genres and reinvented their public personas. It's time for day drinking with Seth and Rihanna! In the 2010s, Rihanna released four studio albums, picked up eight Grammys, and topped charts around the world. Not to be outdone, T-Swift released five albums, picked up ten Grammys, 
and had her own string of chart toppers. Pervasive and indomitable, Taylor comes out on top. Winner, Taylor Swift. Round 3. Beyonce vs Taylor Swift They're two of the most popular, top-earning entertainers of all time. But who achieved more this decade? Swift's meteoric rise and transformation dominated pop culture, and her reputation tour set new records. Meanwhile, Beyonce continued to build her music empire, releasing three solo studio albums and collaborating with husband Jay-Z. Her single formation was a tour de force. However, in terms of album sales, earnings, and pop culture presence, Taylor took the decade, closing it out with a bang when all 18 tracks of her 2019 album Lover charted simultaneously on the Billboard Hot 100. I love you guys so, 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 so much. Our winner for music, Taylor Swift. The final rounds. That leaves us with four finalists, Dwayne Johnson for film, Donald Glover for TV, LeBron James for sports, and Taylor Swift for music. They're all winners, but only one can be our person of the decade. Dwayne Johnson versus Donald Glover. These guys left their marks on every facet of pop culture this decade. Johnson was frequently cited as Hollywood's highest paid actor, starred in the HBO series Ballers, and even tested his singing chops as Maui. Yes, it's really me, it's Maui, breathe it in. Glover headlined blockbusters like The Lion King, co-created and starred in Atlanta, and swept the Grammys as Childish Gambino. Johnson undeniably has Glover beat on the sports front, however. While no longer a WWE regular, Johnson's occasional appearances solidified him as this round's champ. Winner, Dwayne Johnson. LeBron James vs. Taylor Swift Comparing Taylor Swift to LeBron James may seem like apples and oranges, but as in The Highlander, there can be only one. Both are at the apex of their field, with King James standing atop the summit of contenders for the title of best basketball player of all time. Yet Swift consistently tops Forbes lists of highest paid entertainers, and wields power so vast that she even made Apple back down for the royalty policies for their streaming service. Winner, Taylor Swift. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. And now for our final round, Dwayne Johnson vs. Taylor Swift. This is a tough one. Who's had the most successful decade, The Rock or T-Swift? Well, we asked The Rock why he should win. I have humility. And well, that's that's yeah, that's and, one thing you have. And I'll tell you what you don't have. Heart and uh, sense of humor. On the other hand, according to Kevin Hart, you got gas. Do, do people know that? What? Huh? Do they know about Gassy Gary over here? Don't say that. Huh? Well, that's good to know. In the Rock's corner for the decade, over two dozen films, a TV series, WWE appearances, an autobiography, and iconic status as an action hero. Standing on stage with Taylor six studio albums, a slew of Billboard records and awards, 10 Grammys, and a legion of loyal fans. Both earned hundreds of millions in the 2010s. You know what though, gassy or not, The Rock's charm, sorta humility, and transformation from athlete to bona fide blockbuster star have us convinced. Yeah, Mr. Arson here only knows how to blow shit up. Johnson, you got this. Our person of the decade, Dwayne Johnson. What do you think about that, Dwayne? Wait, it's all right. Yeah, it's, it's right. I won. What the f ah! Sorry, Kevin, but we love you too. Thank you. I humbly accept the award. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you to everyone who voted. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.